And welcome to Upon Further Review. I'm Josh Aubrey. Plenty to get to in this week's show. The Georgia Southern football team continues their preseason practice as they prepare for their season opener next month against Morgan State. We'll hear from head coach Clay Helton and some of the players about how the offense is doing and how the team has been doing in their recent scrimmages. We'll also check in with our area high school football teams from a busy Thursday and Friday Evening on the gridiron, Southeast Bullock Yellow Jackets and Statesboro Blue Devils falling on the last seconds of the games in their respective ball games. Southeast Bullock on Thursday night and then Statesboro losing in overtime on Friday night. Meanwhile, over at Gator Alley, the Bullock Academy Gators get the Aaron Phillips era underway with a big win against Tift Area 42 to 20 and the Portal Panthers win their first game since 2019 and open up the season 1-0 as they knock off Hawkinsville on the road by a score of 21 to nothing. We also have some softball highlights to bring you and plenty more coming up on Upon Further Review. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888 or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. Cook's Pharmacy, located on Highway 80 East, is family owned and operated by Lynn and Janie McCook, as well as their son, Josh McCook. Serving the Bullock County area since 2005, McCook's Pharmacy offers fast and friendly service where the customers come first. Vaccinations are available, including shingles, flu, pneumonia, and Tdap, Drive-through service is available with two drive-through windows for your convenience. McCook's Pharmacy offers free local deliveries and new customers are always welcome. Continuing the tradition of our family, caring for your family, McCook's Pharmacy, Highway 80 East. Well, the Georgia Southern football team continues to scrimmage and prepare for the upcoming season, their season opener uh, coming up next month against Morgan State at home. We had a chance to talk with head coach Clay Helton and some of the players, uh, as well as offensive coordinator Brian Ellis, about how the offense has been doing. We got to make sure we know who we're going to play with at the tight end position. Uh, you know, we got to make sure we got enough on the O line, both in the tackle bodies and the guard bodies, of, of where we're going to be game one with that. Um, and then getting the wide outs and wide, I mean, the wide outs and the quarterbacks crisp and what routes we're throwing and, and how we want them ran and where we're throwing it and timing and accuracy and all those things. Quarterbacks start with having great intangibles and doing everything right, never having a bad day. And uh, as far as him being a a student, uh, an athlete, a teammate, his energy and effort that he brings on a consistent basis, you know what you're getting as a teammate each and every day Kyle walks out there. Um, You know, is he perfect? No. He's still growing as a quarterback. But you can just see the experience. And and players appreciate that. You know, a great quarterback provides hope to the entire team that every time you walk out there, you have the opportunity to win to go 1-0 and on that day and that's what Kyle provides to us he provides hope for us in and day out we're getting better each day um, you know we keep telling ourselves we got to focus on one thing every day to get better at we don't want to overload ourselves and overthink because that's when mistakes and uh, errors come in um, but we're doing a great job all over the field offensively defensively special teams flying around um, giving our best effort having great attitude uh, being productive and you know that's 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 our that's what our program is is um, those three things, putting them together to go out and put the best product on the field. I mean, offensively, I would say that we're really starting to gel really well together. Um, you know, our receivers are starting to see what the quarterbacks are seeing. Offensive line is doing a great job picking up pressure. You know, in the run game too, running backs are seeing the holes and hitting them. Um, and then from the staff down to the players, we're doing a great job of communicating. So, you know, just coming together as a unit is, has been really good this so far. Me and Coach Ellis have a great relationship and. Um, the trust that's been built over the last now almost eight and a half months has been, you know, something that I really have appreciated, and my mom and dad have really appreciated off the field too. Um, so it's just about the comfortability, and we have grown to really connect really well, and it's been a lot of fun. I think right now we're uh, getting things rolling. Uh, within the first two weeks, we made a lot of progress throughout camp, but I think right now we're really hitting the ground. We're making plays, and we're we're getting to that point to where it's consistently, and that's the the thing you want to see going into the last few weeks of camp, heading into week one. The game is a, a it's slowed a bit down to me now. It's not as fast as you know when I first started starting at Houston or when I first started playing. The game's a little slower now, so just that aspect of it, that experience helps a lot. 
Of course, the freshmen coming in, you know, we take them in under our wing and, you know, help them as much as we can. But, you know, as far as the older guys, you know, we're all kind of on the same page and we're all starting to come together as a team and really, you know, build that that camaraderie and, uh, you know, really build that relationship with each other. So I feel like off the field will play a big advantage as it will on the field. Every chance that we get, we're out here throwing, you know, any any day off, or really any break that we have, we're out here playing catch or getting some type of time and going on, just just so that we can, <laughs> just so that we could, you know, all be on the same page. On Saturday at Memorial Stadium in Savannah, the Eagles held their second scrimmage of the preseason. We had a chance to hear from head coach Clay Helton on his thoughts on the scrimmage. So you got 50 new guys on this team, you know, basically 33 scholarship, 33 scholarship players, 17 new walk-ons that have never experienced getting on a bus, having a police escort, coming over here, having to play in a different venue you've never played in before. And so that training tool is unique and it's special. I appreciate our administration allowing to do it. I appreciate the city of Savannah, uh, who's critical to our success of being able to load Paulson up with even more fans. So it's a great training tool and it's a great day for us today. You know what I really liked was the first offense and how the fast they started. You know, we gave Kyle, Kyle has had a lot of reps in this camp. We wanted him to start fast with that offense and that opening drive uh, right off the bat, 75 yard drive, really going 100% on the day by him. I thought he's really in tune and really in a great position. And then it was about seeing where our twos and threes are at. I think that's our biggest area of growth right now offensively. I feel really confident in our, in our ones, but we will only be as good a team as we can be if our twos and threes grow right now. Defensively, I, I tell you what, we do have. Uh, we're, we're, we're pretty deep right now with a bunch of players that made good plays today and created turnovers, uh, which I like to see. So, you know, really impressed by the first group offensively. Got to grow with group two and three and defensively a really solid day, which has been basically who they've been all the camp. Well, as the Eagles get set to celebrate their 40th year anniversary of football coming back to Statesboro. There's been a recent groundswell to get her former head coach, Irk Russell, into the College Football Hall of Fame. The College Football Hall of Fame says you have to have 10 years as a head coach to be eligible for the Hall of Fame consideration, but the Eagles are pushing to try to see if he can get in despite that because of his body of work. We had a chance to talk with President uh, Dr. Kyle Marrero and Jared Benko, the athletic director, about their thoughts about trying to get Coach Russell in. This is something obviously we're very passionate about. Our fan base is passionate about it. We're all passionate about it. And we feel like it's, it's something that he's, he's earned and deserved. So really it was more of first, you know, making sure that from an alignment standpoint, because that's how we lead with our values and from an alignment is making sure that we put together a letter uh, on the front end to, to formally request, uh, you know, his, his obviously um, record and accolades be considered for, for induction to the Hall of Fame. You know, from that, listen, I mean, he, he touched a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. And these are what the, the Hall of Fame, you think about Hall of Fames in general, or commensurate people and their impact on people. It's not very, very hard to turn around and run into somebody that Coach Russell directly impacted. And, and that's, what's, that's, that's his lasting legacy. Um, yes, three national championships, that's and taking a program in the modern football era and, and taking it from a startup and getting the football from across the street to, to where we are today. Is, 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 is it's a, in a lot of ways, it's a fairy tale story. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But I would tell you that his lasting legacy is on, is on people. And, and so those that, that played under him, those that know him, um, those are the ones that, that ultimately I hope they continue to, to feel the same, uh, obviously same opportunity that we, we see and that we can continue to take advantage of and, and try to make sure that he gets full consideration. So I would hope they would continue to, to seek out avenues to express their support as well. Yeah. Is there any kind of a formal petition or anything that's circulating? Um, not as much petition at this point. It's just continuing to, to reach out to, to the uh, National Football Foundation and, and expressing mm -hmm. their uh, their or their individuals' um, support for what we're trying to do. And mm -hmm. that's all we're trying to do is, again, bring attention to something we feel that should have happened a long time ago. And uh, we're excited to continue to, to, to push that envelope forward. When Eric Russell came in uh, to start to restart the football program in 1981, what it built to uh, his three national championships all the way through the major growth of Georgia Southern really happened under the brand uh, and the ideas and the vision of Eric Russell of what this institution uh, is, could be, and will be. This is a story that's beyond uh, our region. 
Uh, this permeates, we're you know, in the top 150 programs in history, uh, as ESPN had said, and he was our head football coach that started it. It's time he should be in the College Football Hall of Fame. And stay with us, high school football action coming up next. Family Internal Medicine Associates of Statesboro, providing primary care for Statesboro area patients since 1998, providing complete physicals, complete sports physicals, Medicare wellness exams, full diabetes treatment, and education from lifestyle changes to oral medications to insulin pump therapy, in-house dermatology, in-house circulation tests, and ultrasounds, and in-house labs. Featuring nurse practitioner Melissa Beasley, Family Internal Medicine of Statesboro can accommodate same-day or next-day appointments to serve your needs. Family Internal Medicine and Associates of Statesboro, where we care. At Thadcock Home Furniture and More, we know what it means to find the perfect fit. The feeling of surprise. That just right moment of delight. It's what we see every time a family finds their priced right style and snuggle perfect comfort. Because for us, home isn't simply where you live, it's how you live. Badcock Home Furniture and More, just right. Well, there's plenty of high school football action from Thursday and Friday. Let's send you out for some highlights. First off, from Southeast Bullock, as they were taking on Liberty County in a game that went down to the wire, followed by Statesboro and Glen Academy. The final play of the game ended up sending it into overtime, and then Glen Academy wins on a trick play in the overtime session. Meanwhile, the Bullock Academy Gators able to come out with a victory at home against Tipteria. Let's send you out for highlights. Southeast Bullock Liberty County game Thursday night delayed an hour and 20 minutes by lightning. Liberty County playing without coach Kirk Warner who passed away over the summer. A moment of silence taken before their game. On the second play from scrimmage, the Panthers find the end zone as Jamar Joseph takes a screen pass and goes 50 yards for the score. And just like that, it's 6-0 Liberty. The Jackets finding success on the ground. A.J. Johnson ahead for a first down here. Cross midfield. And then it's Johnson again. Another nice run to the 16 before being brought down. And then from the 5, Southeast brings in 6'4", 240-pound Colin Jackson. And he's in standing up, and it's 6 all. Late in the first, fourth and goal from about the 2. Liberty goes for it. But the Yellow Jacket defense swarming to make a nice stand, and we go to the second, tied at six all. In the second quarter, pinned deep, Gage DiGiovanni, a nice run here, fighting for extra yards, but the Panthers' James Somerset strips the ball loose and goes 20 yards in for the score. And it's 12 to 6 Liberty County. Moments later, D. Giovanni's pass tipped, and Markel at side goes in for the pick six from 27 yards out. Liberty with a 20 to 6 lead. The power would then go out, and the stadium lights were down for almost 30 minutes after the delay. Southeast Bullet coach Jared Zito looking for some focus and drive from the Jackets. And he'd get it first from the defense as they'd come up with a few nice plays. Keeping Liberty deep in their own territory. And then on offense, the pass from D. Giovanni over to Colin Smith. And check out the effort as Smith fights down all the way inside the five. The ball comes loose, but Smith able to recover at the one and from there Colin Jackson does it again the extra point was good and we go to the half with Southeast Bullock trailing 20 to 13 the Jackets carry the momentum into the second half a nice 20 yard run here by D. Giovanni more from the senior signal caller as he fights his way down to the 21. And then from there, the give up the middle to Damian Donaldson, who's in for the score. The extra point failed, and it's 
20 to 19 on the ensuing kickoff. And you know it's usually a bad thing when you hear that. A couple of missed tackles here prove very costly as Jamar Joseph gets free. And he goes 95 yards for the touchdown. Liberty with only one offensive touchdown to this point, but they lead 26 to 19 on the Jackets' next drive. Cole Snyder splits the uprights from 37 yards out, cutting the lead to 26-22. To the fourth we go. And Keon Taylor, the first down run here. And then it's D. Giovanni keeping it. He finds a hole and he's gone. 26 yards for the touchdown as the Jackets grab a 29 to 26 lead. We move ahead. Coach Zito looking for a stop. 120 left and a nice play here. Stripping the ball loose, but the Jackets unable to come up with that loose ball, and that would prove costly. 39 seconds left. No timeouts from their own 20. Carlos Singleton finds Somerset, who fights his way across midfield into Jacket territory. Time ticking away. Singleton next finds Trey Foster across the middle. Down to the 26 with less than 12 seconds remaining. Singleton buys some time and finds a leaping Ron Golden for the game winner as the Panthers stun the Jackets winning 33-29. The Statesboro Blue Devils getting the 2022 season officially underway at Womack Field as they're hosting Glen Academy playing without Quarterback Cam Michael out with an injury early on. Off the opening kickoff, Jordan Lovett taking this one all the way into Glen Academy territory a little bit later. The give to Lovett. He bounces outside, gets close to a first down. Later, fourth down and 13. Bruce Yawn, the sophomore in at quarterback, and his first completion ends up as a touchdown, James Flagg hauls it in from 31 yards out, and it's 7-0 Blue Devils. Glenn Academy comes right down the field, and they'd score on the option pitch. Peacock takes it in for the score, and we're tied at 7-all. We move ahead to the second quarter, and it's Yawn hooking up with Flagg. Once again, this one a 35-yard score. Statesboro on top, 14 to seven. Later, Glenn pin deep. And the pass picked off by A.J. Eason for the touchdown. Statesboro on top, 21-7. Glenn coming back. Quarterback Tyler Devlin into the end zone and it's 21 to 14 Statesboro at the half. We move ahead to the second half and a big play here. Jordan Lovett, take a look at this run. He breaks one tackle in the backfield, and it looks like they've got him with three players, but he cuts back, and this one, as he drags the defender into the end zone, 70-yard score. Statesboro on top, 28-14, but Glenn comes right back. The pass across the middle to Peacock from Devlin, and then it's Peacock going in for his second touchdown of the game. Cutting the lead to seven. 28-21, we move to the fourth. A big play here on the punt. The ball muffed. Glenn Academy able to recover deep in Statesboro territory. This would lead to a short touchdown from Peacock, his third of the game. Statesboro answering is Jordan Lovett. Gets outside, he'd have 277 yards rushing in the game. This one all the way down inside the 20. Time winding down, fourth and one, 231 left. Tied game at 28, and Statesboro going for it on fourth and one. Love it, out of the Wildcat, able to get the one yard. And then from the one, love it. Going into the end zone, Statesboro takes a 35-28 lead with a minute and 30 left in the game. But Glenn Academy 
takes advantage of good field position off the ensuing kickoff. They'd only have 60 yards to go to the end zone, but no timeouts. A nice pass here. Sets Glen Academy up in good field position. And then on fourth and 10, 35 seconds left, Devlin hits David Prince for the first down. And then with four seconds left, the final play of the game, the two hook up again. Prince goes up for the score. And we go to overtime, tied at 35 in overtime. Statesboro, the first possession. Love it in for the touchdown. Glenn Academy is going to answer on their drive. Peacock in for the score. Then on the extra point, Coach Rocky Adago goes with the trickery. And kicker Cody Arnold gets the ball. He goes into the end zone for the score. And that will be it. Statesboro falls by a final of 43-42. to The Bullock Academy Gators in their home opener Friday night hosting Tift area. The Gators get the scoring started. Luke Willoughby breaking tackles, going down the right sidelines all the way for the touchdown as the Gators open up a 7-0 lead. The defense coming to play. Causing the fumble, this one picked up and run back for a touchdown by Justin Tran. And it's 14 to nothing, Gators. They continue to pile it on, playing good on defense. The ball coming loose. Bullock Academy able to scoop it up. And then they go in for the touchdown. Bryson Scott around the right side. 20 to nothing Gators at this point. Bullock Academy looking like they're going to run away with this, but Tift area comes back. They get some points on the board on the long pass play. A little bit later, back to the air they go, cutting the lead to 20 to 13. The Gators come back with Bryson Scott for the touchdown. Tift area answering once again through the air. With the touchdown here, this would cut the lead to 28 to 20. But late in the fourth, the Gators put this one away. Hand off around the left side. And Reed Clifton in for the final score of the game. As BA wins, they'd go on to win 42 to 20. And as we mentioned in the top of the show, congratulations to Portal head coach Jason McEachin and the Portal Panthers for knocking off Hawkinsville 21 to 20 on the road and earning their first victory since 2019. Well, meanwhile, some plenty of high school softball action. Let's send you out for a big game this past week between Statesboro High and Southeast Bullock. Southeast Bullock hosting Statesboro in a battle of the boroughs. The Jackets up 1-0, but the Blue Devils tie it. Cambry Isaacson singles to right, and it's one all. Next up, Kaylee Deal, the single to center. Maggie Proctor will score, but the Jackets able to get the runner at third to end the rally. The Jackets respond. The bloop just out of the reach of catcher Claiborne Jones and Delaney Thames hustles home to score. Southeast takes a 3-2 lead. Next, Marissa Waters, ground ball gets into center. And it's 4-2. More to come from the Jackets. The bases loaded for Megan Newman. She singles to center with the bases loaded in at 6-2. Waters then up to bat again, and she brings the runner home from second with the RBI to left. It's 7-2. The Blue Devils scratch back for a couple runs. Isaac's in the RBI double to the fence and right, and it's 7-3. Next, it's Proctor. With the opposite field single, and it's seven to four. To the sixth we go. Delaney Thames gets that run back as she goes up, up, and away to left. The solo homer, it's eight to four. They'd add another to go up nine four. But in the top of the seventh, the Blue Devils rally, bases loaded. The usual routine force at second bobbled two run score to make it nine to six. 
Mincy Aikens then. The deep fly ball to center. That would play another run. And it's nine to seven. Proctor up next with the runner on third. And this sack fly to right will make it a one run game. And finally, bases loaded, two out. Isaacson's ground ball up the middle. Thames, a great job getting the ball, but the throw in the dirt can't be snagged. Two run score. The Blue Devils take a 10 9 lead. Thames in the bottom of the seventh. Two outs, and she rips the single into left. But with two out, the Blue Devils able to make the play here to end the game, and they'd win 10 to 9. And that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.